Welcome back to The Breakfast and uh, good morning once again. It's time for Off the Press where we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. Kicking off this morning with the Punch newspapers and there's, uh, it's going to be on your screen in a few seconds. Uh, there's something there on Nigeria's debt profile currently, a little scary. Yes, it says debt rises by 20.8 trillion naira under Buhari, servicing gulps 10.26 trillion naira. Federal government owes 26.9 trillion. State FCT owes 6.01 trillion naira. Debt revenue ratio shows danger, says uh, experts. And of course, the federal government's borrowing not transparent. Its purpose not known, says economists. Also on the point this morning, Nigeria's house on fire. We're under attack, says Bajabia Mila. And the Red Cross blames overloading as Buhari mourns 150 who, uh, persons who drown in Kebi State. That is such a sad story. Federal government expects um, first oil uh, from new marginal fields by 2022. And experts fault Naira devaluation, say prices will rise and poverty deepen. Buhari didn't consult widely on judiciary autonomy and order uh, 10 is faulty. And that is from the Nigerian Governor's Forum. Nigerians present divergent views as a constitutional panel holds hearing. Also on the point this morning, Ikiti orders probe as 100 students are hospitalized after fumigation. Contribution uh, pension assets rise to 12.4 trillion naira, says PENCOM. And federal government plans 1 trillion naira 17 smart schools and 1.2 trillion uh, naira model institutions. Uh, finally, this morning, Masari Falls presidency backs governors, says open grazing on Islamic. Oh, well, uh, Buba Mara is saying here, if uh, cannabis is legalized, Nigeria is uh, becoming a den of junkies and criminals. Hmm. All right, let's turn to the Nigerian Tribune. At zonal hearing on constitutional review, return to 1963 constitution, state police fiscal federalism dominate. Accountant General makes U-turn, says 4.2 million pounds Iburi loot still being awaited. Naira trades for 493 Naira per dollar at the parallel market. That's almost 500 Naira at the parallel market. FG states FCT to get $750 million World Bank grants for two years. Each state gets $20 million. FG, FCT, $15 million each. Affair on Thursday, appointments, promotion and remuneration of judges in Nigeria, the need for change. Youth and Sports Minister says NYC won't be scrapped. Erufai sacks 19 political appointees. Buhari says insecurity affecting his development plans. Lawan, Badabi Amila, Sultan Oni, others express concern over growing insecurity. Buhari's Executive Order 10 on Judicial Autonomy unnecessary, ill-advised. That's according to the NGF. Fumigation lands over 100 students in hospital in AKT. Over 100 missing, 22 rescued, 5 dead in Kebi boat tragedy. NIS to profile herdsmen entering through the country through the Nigeria-Niger border. Lastly, on the Nigerian Tribune, gunmen attack police patrol van, Q1 officer in Delta State. The Daily Independent, up next, it says uh, there, states disagree on state police, restructuring, and state creation. Songwolu wants uh, fiscal federalism, special status for Lagos. Nigeria needs a new constitution, not amendment, and that's from the Delta State Governor, Okoa. And uh, we can also see here, Akiri Dulu saying, a review should address regional agitations. Afe Babalola says, a constitution review will be a futile exercise. All right, 160 feared dead as boat capsizes in Kebi. Reps Somon Malamiova on recovered $60 billion, discover loopholes in EFCC reports. And also President Buhari blames international borders for insecurity in Nigeria. Peace is expensive, but insecurity costs more, says the Chief of Defense Staff. And Governor Orofai sacks 19 political appointees to cut costs. I hope that includes the door opener for the door opener. That was a that funny was, video. <laughs> that was sacked. Major crisis imminent, Okotia warns, and fear grips Kubwa residents as gunmen strike again, 
kidnapped too. Lastly, office holders paying lip service to insecurity, says Sultan. And uh, the final newspaper here, The Nation. It reads, Constitution, state police, power devolution, top talks. Lagos six special status, Afe ba Babalola calls for 1963 constitution. Southeast says, give us more states. Niger Delta converses fiscal federalism. Above the headline of the nation newspaper, sought and laments inaction on security plans. Don't, uh, politicians can't, on, he says, politicians can't go home. Scores feared killed in Kebi Ferry incident. The president said he's sad. Naira crashes to 493 Naira to a dollar in parallel market. 100 Ekiti students hospitalized after inhaling chemical. Also in the Nation newspaper, Elrufai Sachs 19 AIDS, UNAU ECOWAS expressed concern over Mali as presidents and prime minister resign. The Nation newspaper also has the stories, Buhari not against open grazing ban, says presidency. Okay, that sounds like a contradiction to the earlier stance of the president. And president's fears about state police. Why NYC should not be scrapped by federal government? Bread price to go up. Those are the stories we're looking at on the Nation newspaper this morning. All right, just before uh, our guest uh, uh, joins us, uh, we can just quickly also share our thoughts on some of these ones. Uh, the first one there, of course, on the Poncha Shed, you know, debt rises by 20.8 trillion naira under Buhari. Uh, says uh, servicing gulps 10. Uh, uh, two six trillion naira, and uh, uh, multiple times we've also spoken about you know the Nigeria's debt, um, you know, and um, you know why it's a problem, you know, because every year you know we have to create um, some space to pay back those funds in our budget, and it's taken out some of the money that we should use for you know better things, you know, and fixing the country. If we continue to service debt and uh, the the mm -hmm. percentage of our you know our budget that goes into debt servicing continues to rise every year. Um, you know, analysts have also said uh, that there's nothing wrong with borrowing. Um, it's not a crime to borrow. Big con bigger countries, you know, than Nigeria still borrow. The United States is owing billions and billions of dollars. I'm not sure who they're owing. Um, but it is what exactly you use these funds for. And can these funds and the utilization of these funds eventually roll over and pay back, um, you know, the, uh, um, uh, um, the funds that were borrowed? If not, then you're putting yourself into more and more trouble. So the question, of course, that I believe Nigerians should be asking is, what have these funds been used for? If we are owing trillions of Naira, what were these funds put into? You know, on the federal uh, level, on the state level also, um, if states are owing as much as six trillion Naira, what were these funds used for? In what ways have these funds become, um, you know, what projects have you seen? Is it in healthcare? in infrastructure, roads, bridges, um, um, in, and everything, you know, that is possible, um, you know, that you can point to. W where exactly have these funds gone into? And so it is a legit and, you know, a legitimate question that Nigerians need to ask. By the time this administration leaves power, if we're going to be in 30 trillion naira, 23 trillion, 40 trillion naira debt, um, what will the administration boast of that these monies were borrowed for? Um, in yeah. just eight years, what will be those things that we can point out and, and say, oh, you know, these are the things that we achieved with the amount of money that we borrowed. Now we have, you know, 70% you know, better infrastructure than we had before. Now we have trains running across the country. Now we have better roads. Now we have, um, you know, bridges and all of that. But if we can't um, um, boast of some of all these things, then it, sh it should be frightening uh, for Nigerians. And they are legitimate questions once again. Um, our senior news editor, uh, Kyrie Ladende, joining us uh, this morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Nasaoge. All right. So Good morning, Aneta. Yes. We've taken a look at uh, the papers this morning, and the current uh, story has been on the Constitution Review, just how states basically disagree on state policing, on uh, uh, restructuring state creation. We know that uh, South is sustained in one more state. You know, there's just uh, so much angles coming from here. How, how, how do you uh, interpret the stories regarding the uh, Constitution Review? Okay, let me start by saying that uh, there's absolutely nothing new in what is being debated. Every four, four years, this has been the ritual. What might make it a difference this time is uh, how speedy and how fast they can get this thing signed off for the president to give his assent so that we are not uh, put in that conundrum of, oh, oh, the time is gone, the 
lawmakers are on recess and we end up going the same circle every four years. Now, this is very critical. And for a lot of people who believe that it's still window dressing, it's still a form of symptomatic treatment, rather than going to the root of the issue. What do I mean by the root of the issue? A new constitution, a new constitution that will not only um, seek to address the, the, the advantages for the governors, because the governors are for devolution of powers. They want more powers. They want more revenue into their forces. But that's not the whole idea of restructuring. When we talk about restructuring, we're talking beyond the governors having more power. We want powers to the people. We want people to hold the government closest to them to, 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 to accountability. Because it's not about the governors having more powers coming from the center, but the governor should also devote power to the third chair of government, which is the local government. So the state policing is a lovely idea. We hope it will not be abused, even though there will be some skirmishes where some governors will use it to, you know, which aren't their opponents. That is that cannot be taken away, but it's much preferred than the current structure. Then the issue of one more state for the southeast. This is also very very important. A, a region cannot have seven states like the northwest have seven states, and the southeast have always had five states. So what does it take? to make it six. However, we must also remind people that over time, the state's creation has always been the executive fiat of the military president, I mean, the military head of state. Uh, sorry, pardon my language. I don't want to use the president for a man that came in through the barriers of gun. So it is only important that it is fair, it is equitable to have one state in the southeast. Okay, um, the, you know, one of the stories also, of course, is uh, on the Daily Independent, the president blaming uh, foreign borders for Nigeria's insecurity. Uh, do you think that we maybe have spent, you know, too much time um, and, you know, that excuse may not work anymore? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be, I don't want to fall into the trap of uh, headline casting. Um, we might need to go deeper to understand what the real issue is, because saying that is not only insulting to our intelligence, but it's just to let us know that there is lack of willpower by the people at the helm of affairs. So I want to treat it on the ground of thinking beyond the headline. Now, when you talk about the borders, we remember when government locked up the borders, there was some hue and cry from businessmen who felt that you cut them out. Even some ECOWAS member states, you know, kicked against it that this is not part of what we signed in the ECOWAS treaty. And there were a whole lot of uh, things that we had some infractions on. And at the end of the day, government had to come down and do all those things. So for us, it's not enough excuse. It's for government to ensure that if you want to play the Big Brother's role in the sub-region, then you also need to play the Big Brother role by providing necessary security at your borders. You need to be firm and strict on your rules of engagement so that you don't come and make your people victims of all these heinous crimes that have been perpetrated either by locals or by foreigners. All right. Um, you know, but, but why, why I brought that up, you know, is because I, I felt, um, you know, we, we've spent, you know, almost six years, you know, with the current administration. Shouldn't that have been enough time for us to have done better with, uh, um, you know, our borders, you know, protecting, you know, Nigeria's uh, sovereignty and, of course, uh, uh, closing those loopholes with our borders? Yes, I totally understand your view. And uh, that's why I said it's quite insulting for us to still be you know, passing the book. In, in, in every civilized climb, leaders don't give such kind of excuses. They need it in the bud. They protect their citizens. That's their primary responsibility. You need to give us security. You need to give us welfare. And this can never be mortgaged. Even though we, some of us may not agree with the way the Constitution was written and how it was written, but that particular sentence is something that we will stand with and that is the protection of uh, it, it must provide the security and welfare for the citizens 
So I totally agree with you. Let the government do the needful. If it's going to cost us some economic gains, then we need to be alive for us to even have food. Mm. And um, looking at the story we've seen, you know, on all papers this morning about the Naira trading for almost 500 Naira to a dollar, you know, at the parallel mm. market. How, how do you think this would basically affect the prices of things locally, especially when they import it? it it's quite um, disturbing. And it's something that we had expected. And it appears we're doing little. We're, we're working towards addressing these issues. You remember the time of putting so much attention on local rice when we're paying attention on uh, local manufacturing, but it appears that it has seen much down. Things are beginning to go back to what it used to be. And until we'll prioritize the issue of local production, this will continue. I remember one article, I don't know whether you came across it, when someone was doing the analysis that it's not about the exchange rate, it's about the worth of the Naira and the worth of these uh, dollars. That what can $10 do to you, what can 10, I mean, the worth of it in Naira do to you? Someone was saying that this amount cannot get you accommodation, this cannot do you this. I, I think it's something for us to look at and we may lose our breath, we may lose our senses if we continue with this exchange rate. Because let any government come in and promise us it will turn to one naira to one dollar. It's, it's something that I don't think will ever happen mm. in our lifetime. And still talking about money, we know that uh, this issue of the 4.2 uh, million Ibori pounds, Ibori loots, is, is still very controversial. <laughs> you know, they had earlier said, you know, Delta State government is not a signatory to, you know, the MOU and the repatriation ag agreement. I think it's just, I think it's just the issue of bureaucracy. I think it's the issue of bureaucracy. I don't think the accountant general would come on air. I mean, while he was re responding to questions from lawmakers, and he will say that uh, Delta State is getting the money, so, or has gotten the money. So let's not pay, pay, too, uh, pay too much attention mm -hmm. on semantics now. Right. The bottom line is, uh, Data state is having their that money, whether they will have it or they don't have it, it shouldn't be. A we're not, um, in my view. Yeah, we, we don't want to, you know, wrap up this one without uh, saying something quickly about the 160 lives that have been reported lost in a, a boat that capsized in Kebi. Uh, the president, of course, has uh, sent uh, his uh, a message uh, mourning those lives. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, it sh shouldn't it be big enough for national mourning, 160 Nigerians? Hmm. Uh, um, I, I don't know why you're bringing this up. This is quite, uh, this is not something we should gloss over. This is not something we should rush. It's a topic on its own. It's something that deserves a whole lot of attention. And it underscores the kind of um, disrespect that we pay to the issue of lives in this country. It is not just boat capsizing. What about the kidnapping that are happening every now and then? What about people that are being wasted on our roads? It just tells us that um, there's so much we need to do about the way we prioritize our lives. And uh, for me, I, I don't know whether Osaoge has engaged in some uh, 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 water transportation even Lagos that should be doing very well. Sometimes when I see the way the boats are, I remember my experience. I was to come from Ikorodu to, to the island one of those evenings. And when I saw the, <laughs> the old arrangement, I said, I would rather go by the road and spend all the hours on the road. That's to let you know that we are not yet serious. So if Lagos is still seen in that light, trust me, it has to be worse in many places. All right. Kayode Ladende, always a pleasure speaking with you and hearing your perspective. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take a break here and return to discuss events that happened today in history.